trace me new life did he give each of my heart does my savior now live his love and the trace me new life did he give each of my heart does my savior now live his love and the trace me new life did he give each of my heart does my savior now live his love and the trace me new life Good morning, afternoon, or evening, or even the middle of the night, whenever you are watching. I want to say aloha and mahalo for tuning in to Kona Face Center, to our website, to all of the things that we have on the air. We have a lot for being up in a little town called Captain Cook on the big island of Kona. We're in Studio One. It's just me and my director because we're the only two that can fit in the studio at the same time. So <laughs> everyone has space, space issues, right? Thank you for the thumbs up and thank you for the subscription if you have not yet subscribed. And be sure if you're in a place, some of the places that you're, you're looking from on your screen don't show this. But if you have a little bell, hit it because it will notify you every time that we're on. All right, I am going to start where I left off. And I think I left off here, but if I'm repeating a scripture, forgive me. I'm talking, I started off in the book of Ruth. And you can go back and listen to the first part of this teaching if you so like. But I'm going to continue on. I'm still in the Psalms from last week. And we are talking about God being our Redeemer completely forgetting about all of our sins, completely setting us free. We don't have to stay in recovery, people. He recovered us. He has set us free and born us as new creations in Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Psalm 44, 26, rise up, be our help and redeem us for the sake of your loving kindness because he loves us because he is kind. That is such a powerful, powerful word in the Hebrew, but it is powerful in English too. It's loving kindness. It's loving. God loves us more than we could ever think or imagine. And his kindness is above and beyond that which our pea brains could understand. Psalm 49, 15. But God will redeem my soul from the power of Sheol, for he will receive me. And that is a Selah. That means just wait, just listen to that. Just meditate on the fact that he redeems our souls from hell. What a God we serve. Psalm 69 and 18. Oh, draw near to my soul and redeem it. Ransom me because of my enemies. We can cry out to God when we're in a situation that we feel like the whole world is after us. And maybe it is in a sense, but God will get us through. He will get us over. He will get us under. He will get us around any way he has to get us to the other side. So we are living in his redemption. All right, I'm going to read Psalm 77, 14 and 20. Well, I'll tell you, I just could meditate on these words all day today. They're, they're so powerful if you really sit before God and allow the Holy Spirit to minister them to you. So I encourage you to do that. Psalm 77, starting in verse 14. You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your strength among the peoples. You have by your power redeemed your people. The sons of Jacob and Joseph. Again, there's a sila before we get into the rest of it. The water saw you, O God. The water saw you and they were in anguish. The deeps also trembled. Well, you could take this into many places in the Bible, but I like thinking about the waters trembling, the waters being in anguish. When Moses was taking the children of Israel from Egypt, to their promised land and the waters ceased so that they could literally walk through on the dry land. It says it was dry land. And then when they were safe and on the other side, the waters came back and drowned those who were trying to kill God's people. Psalm 78, 35. 
and they remembered that God was their rock and the Most High God, their Redeemer. Remember that God is your Redeemer. We should have the joy of the Lord continuously. And Jason preached a message. It was last night, but you won't be getting this the next day. So go back and look at the messages where Jason is talking about the joy because it was so good and it was filmed on, let's see, yesterday was the 21st or 22nd of June, Wednesday. Psalm 103.4, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion. Now, I don't know what your life, life was like before Jesus. And maybe you grew up in a godly Christian home and you were able to avoid all the horrible mistakes that many of us made when we were younger. But he redeemed us. He took us out of that pit. He took us into the heavenlies. He walks with us. The kingdom of God is within us. The Holy Spirit indwells us. He helps us in every circumstance. Psalm 106.10 So he saved them from the hand of the one who hated them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. So it may be a people group that is an enemy, but the real enemy, we don't fight flesh and blood. It says this very clearly in the New Testament. It's demonic forces. And he redeems us. He pulls us out. He will stop the work of the enemy because he said it was one of the reasons he came for. To defeat the work of the enemy. Psalm 107 and 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I say I am the redeemed of the Lord. And I, not a bad pride, but a good proud of it. I'm telling you, I'm proud in my dad, not in myself. He is so awesome. And then it says, the rest of that verse says, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the adversary. The adversary is the devil, the liar, the evil one. There's all kinds of names for him. I don't care what they are. I don't capitalize Satan when I'm writing it because he's not worthy of being capitalized like my Lord is, my Lord Jesus. Psalm 111 and 9 he has sent redemption to his people. He has ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name, God's name. Psalm 137 and 8. Oh, Israel, hope in the Lord. And not just Israel, all people. For with the Lord there is loving kindness, and with him is abundant redemption. He will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. He will redeem Joe and Pat and Larry and Harry and whoever you are. He will redeem you from all your iniquities. When you understand what he did at the cross and you ask him to come in and be Lord of your life. I'm not talking about just Savior. He is our Savior, but he has to be Lord. Look up what that means. Zechariah 10 and 8. I will whistle for them to gather them together, for I have re redeemed them, and they will be as numerous as they were before. God's in charge of the count, not man. Job nineteen twenty-five to 27. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last, he will take his stand on the earth. This is going to come and happen. Even after my skin is destroyed, yet from my flesh I shall see God, whom I myself shall behold, and whom my eyes will see and not another. My heart faints, faints within me. So whether we are living or we have already passed on, and here's the news, everybody's going to be born and everybody's going to die. But we will see him. We will be carried up with him into the heaven of heavenly heavenlies. Lamentations 358. O oh Lord, you have pleaded my soul's cause. You have redeemed my life. Is not that the cry of our soul to be forgiven? And our Lord and Savior went to the cross and paid the price and said, it is finished. Jeremiah 15 and 21. So I will deliver you from the hand of the wicked and I will redeem you from the grasp of the violent. Well, there's always been wicked and there's always been violence. 
But in our country, it just is so extreme right now. And they get away with it. They get away with it. And people that love God end up oftentimes behind the bars. Persecution is not avoidable. We have little of it now, but it's coming to a point that you need to be so solid in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hosea 7.13 Woe to them, for they have strayed from me. Destruction is theirs, for they have rebelled against me. I would redeem them, but they speak lies against me. Get the truth, people, and don't let go, is what the scripture says. Don't let go of the truth of God. Colossians 1, 13 to 14. For he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. Luke 1, 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel for he has visited us and accomplished redemption for his people. Why? Because of the cross. Read the gospels. Romans 3, 23 to 24. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. Our redemption only comes from Yeshua Messiah, Christ Jesus. That's it. That was God the Father's plan, God's, God the Son's plan, and God the Holy Spirit's plan. And that's what it is. 1 Corinthians 1 and 30. But by his doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. We were made right, 100% right. God sees us that way when we walk in obedience with our Lord. 1 Corinthians 7.23, you were bought with a price. Do not become slaves of men. Be careful when things come down. Be careful that you are following God, that you are seeking God and not the voice of men. We have found out very quickly all the lies that went on with COVID and COVID vaccines. So make sure you are seeking the King of Kings and Lord of Lords for truth. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. He did that for us. In order that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we would receive the promise of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. But it's through faith, people. We have to walk in faith. Now, I have a few more scriptures that I'm going to go ahead and finish, even if I'm going over a little bit today, because I really want you to get this. But I am asking that you just don't listen, that you go and study. I have given you all the scriptures. You can study them in, in whatever translation you have. You can study them, peel them apart, look at the words, look at the meanings. And every believer should do that. We should know what we believe. Galatians 4 and 4 to 5. But when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. But he has gone further than that and redeemed anyone who calls on his name. Ephesians 1 and 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. See what I'm talking about? God is so good. Hebrews 9, 11 to 12. But when Christ appeared as the high priest of the good things to come, he entered through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this creation, and not through the blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood, he entered the holy place once for all, once for A-L-L, -L, and that includes you, all having obtained eternal redemption, if you choose the life that Jesus has for you. 1 Peter 1, 18 to 21, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life, inherited from your forefathers, 
but with precious blood as of a lamb, unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. For he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but has appeared in these last times for the sake of you. How is he foreknown? Because Father, Son, Holy Spirit are one. He is God. Romans 8, 19 to 23. For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. I don't know about you, but I am so over corruption. And it is so apparent. It is, it is in our face day by day by day. Don't believe it. Turn that news off. Don't listen to the lies. Be smarter than that. Ask Jesus to come into your life and he will give you his mind to learn and to understand things. Luke 21 and 28. But when these things begin to take place, straighten up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Jesus is soon to return. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, here's the key, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession in the praise of his glory. And I'm going to end this session with letting you know that the baptism in the Holy Spirit is needed by every believer. And when churches or people or doctrines tell you that that left when Jesus left, that is not true. That is not true because all of the work of the Holy Spirit began. Jesus breathed on them the end of Luke, but in Acts, all of the work about the Holy Spirit indwelling us, being baptized, having a prayer language that even the devil doesn't understand, all came, all came as a gift that Jesus gave us before he left the earth the first time. He's coming back. Be alert and be ready, and God bless you. You alone, Lord, made me a brand new creation. It is only by your Spirit could this have been done.